Hey there, in this lecture, we'll implement the states and animate the player. The state of the player will be a variable called state that will store which state the player is in. There can be many states such as idle, move, attack and so on. All of these states will be carried inside an enum, which is basically a group of numbers, numbered in an ascending order. So you can set the state variable to a member of that enum to set the state. In the step event, we will run a switch statement that will run different code based on the state. Here's how a switch statement works. Let's take this if statement. If state is idle, the first code block will run. But if it's move, the second code block will run. You can create the same code using a switch statement like this. In a switch statement, the code inside a case runs if the value of the variable here is equal to the case's value. So here, if state is idle, this code will run. And if it's move, this code will run. You also need a break when a case's code ends because if you don't use it, the rest of the cases will be executed as well. The break basically marks the position where the case ends. Now for the sprites, we'll create a 2D array that will store the sprite for each state in each direction. Since there are 4 directions, each state will have 4 sprites. For the directions, we'll be using 0 for right, 1 for up, 2 for left and 3 for down. That's because in Game Maker, the direction 0 is right. 90 is up, 180 is left, and 270 is down. So if you divide these values by 90, you get these numbers. Any values in between will be floored. Lastly, we'll set the state of the player object and the direction where it is moving and using those values like the appropriate sprite from the array. Now let's get to the coding. First of all, I'll open the create event of the player and add the states comment. And here are the states. I'll create an enum called st and inside it create two members, idle and move. So these are the two states we'll create. And we'll create a variable called state and set it to st idle. Now we'll create a 2D array that will contain the sprites for each state in each direction. So here I have four sprites for each state, idle and move. So in the create event, I'll add this. So this is the sprites array. A 2D array stores data using two axes. In the first one we'll use the state in the second one, we'll use the direction. These are the sprites for the idle state and these for the move state. Make sure the sprite directions are in the same order as mine. Now I'll open the step event and add a switch statement here with the state variable in its parentheses. I'll put curly brackets around all the code in the event, select all of it, then press tab twice. I'll add a case here for st idle and at the end, a break. So now if the player's state is st idle, this code will run. But I also want this code to run when it's moving, so I'll add another case here for ST move. Now this code will run whether the state is idle or move. Now at the end of this case's code, I'll add this. The function apps will return the absolute positive value of a number. So if it's a negative number, say minus 3, it'll return a positive value 3. So I'm adding the absolute values of move x and move y and testing whether they are equal to 0. If they are 0, that means the player is not moving, so I'll set the state to st idle. But if it's not 0, then the else part will set the state to st move. Now I'll set the direction where the player is moving. So in the create event under variables, I'll initialize move there at 0. So this variable will hold the direction for the sprite. Now inside the step event at the end, I'll add this. If the player is moving, then it will set move there to this. This point direction function will get the direction value of the player's movement. Then the direction will be divided by 90. The reason I'm using div is because it automatically floors the result. With flooring, the values are rounded down. So 1.3 will become 1, 2.7 will become 2, and so on. Now outside of this switch statement, I'll add this code. The sprite index is the sprite of the object. So using the state and the moving direction, it'll select a sprite from the array and set it to the sprite index. So now I'll run the game. So you can see that the player is using the correct sprite for each state and direction. Now let's continue to our next lecture where we'll make the player able to run and add WSD input.